expanding. For me, nothing gets as monotonous as taking a piece like a router bowl, a router tray, or maybe something that's been CNC carved and hand sanding out all the corners, trying to get it even. So fortunately, there are some great power sanders out there, some smaller ones. Obviously, you have your random orbital sanders, five inches, six inches, your belt sanders, but really those small ones, some smaller footprints. And so in this video, we're going to look at some of these specialty unique sanders. And so use those timestamps down below to skip around as needed or just stay on and watch them all. But here you go, some specialty sanders in use, uh, seeing some pros and cons. So a multi-tool, really handy to have. Uh, usually we're going to use this on you know, making different cuts. You can switch it out. It's a multi-tool, right? You can switch out pretty quickly for the blades. But this little sanding, sanding pad is really nice. You got the corners. And so this is really great if you're making boxes and you can just kind of, let me snag that on. All right. And I can get in tight. So again, it's not a full five inch, like a, a random orbit. It's got a little bit of depth to it. So this is great to get the surface of a bowl, right? To get into this corner like so. So here I am just cleaning up the bottom of this router tray. Uh, this just really does a great job getting into those corners. You can also do the sides uh, pretty easily. So here you can see this is just really helpful for getting into those corners. Uh, it's again because of that triangular corner, right? It's not rounded. You can get a little bit more. It's just going to save you some of that hand sanding. So great option, multi-tool. Pneumatic sanders. <laughs> Air sanders, huge, right? So these are typically used with automotive, automotive work, but a lot of woodworkers, we already have an air compressor and look at this, two inches, right? Two inch diameter or a three inch diameter. And unlike with the drill, which can run out, right? This is just gonna keep going and it does have some power. And so if you have like a router bowl or a router tray or a CNC project like this, and it's not even, this really helps to, to even out all those bits, right? Really to eliminate all those spots. So here you can see on this router tray, I dipped a little bit low with the router bit. So some unsightly bottoms. And uh, with this pneumatic tool, I can really get in there, right? It fits, whereas a random orbital uh, sander would not fit. And it does have the power that I need to clean it up. This is just a, a quick little sample to show you, but you can switch through all the grits and uh, really helps on the bottom of these trays and items like this. So as far as these, there's so many different options. This is just a, a pretty affordable starter one, and it's really easy just to adjust, switch out for the different, uh, different diameter discs. You can also add the foam backer on these like with others, but uh, it's pretty straightforward and you got some good reach, right? So I can get into those nooks and crannies. Again, it's gonna save you some hand sanding. Pneumatic air tools, great option. So drill adapters. Basically, it's just a little adapter. You got your foam pad, you got your Velcro, and then sand away. Uh, these are great because most of us have a drill. And again, it's that smaller footprint. So as opposed to the five inches or six inches of a random orbital sander, I can really get in and I can sand around. Right? So uh, with this, there are some other options, right? I can switch to all the different sizes, smaller, smaller, even go small, like this little one inch, which is great. Again, those hard to reach places down low, uh, you can do some extenders, plenty of options. You do also have the option with these is uh, if you want a little bit more contouring. So you have a firm, a firm foam, and then you can, uh, on top of the firm, you can add a little bit more cush, and that's gonna help as you're going in and you wanna get kind of up in the corner and the side. One downside with this option, this is probably the cheapest option uh, to just get a set of these and then just a bunch of sandpaper. Uh, downside is just your drill, right? However long you gotta hold the drill in place, battery life, and it doesn't quite have the power as say, you know, pneumatic or, you know, with an angle grinder, but it is a solid option and, and it definitely works. So here you can see I'm just using that standard three inch foam and it really does a great job cleaning it up. Uh, again, it's, it's a drill. Uh, however, I'm able to really get in there much easier than just using my hand and sandpaper. And uh, it's a really good option, a good affordable option, but uh, cleans up nicely, sands well. Stand with the drill attachments. Uh, you got these little drum sleeves. So these are spindles, but unlike, you know, a bench top unit where there's a locking nut on top, uh, these have 
a locking nut on the bottom just to tighten uh, this sleeve. And so for these, right, you just stick on your sanding sleeve, put it in your chuck, and you got yourself a spindle. So this is great to get the sides, get the corners, and because this is only, you know, maybe a quarter, no, not even a quarter inch, three sixteenths of an inch on the top there, it's not gonna really mar up the bottom of your surface. So this is a great option. So these attachments work great in a drill, right? A corded drill or a cordless drill like so, but they work best when you put them in a drill press, right? So a drill press, uh, you lock it in, and then again, you're controlling the piece instead of holding the sander, you can control the piece and you get a little bit more control. And with the drill press, you have a little bit more power. So here you can see when I did my router bowl video, how I used these in the drill press to really get some clean lines. So here's that router bowl video with me using the drill press. The drill press really did work well for these bowls. Uh, it cleaned up any lines I had from the router. I just went with 80 grit for the most part here, but the drill press has the power. Uh, it's also fixed and I'm controlling the workpiece as opposed to a tool. So drill press is great. However, you don't have to have the drill press. Here you can see it up close and personal, right? A little bit closer to see how the sleeve works. And then you just slide on the different grits, all the different options, and then go ahead and tighten it up. Uh, the one issue that I have found with these, uh, especially when trying to do it with the, the drill, is sometimes it likes to slip off. And so getting it tight can be a little bit problematic at times. You can see it's, kind of, it's wanting to slip there, but you can do that with a hand drill. Uh, one quick tip uh, for purchasing the sandpaper, the abrasives on these, I just like to use the full length that you would use for like a spindle sander for a benchtop unit, and then just cut it. Uh, saves you a lot of money, works great. So links to all of this down below, if so desired. One more cool sanding attachment for the drill is a sanding mop or a sanding star. Uh, you can find these on Amazon. Usually I get these on Klingspor uh, where I get a lot of my abrasives and sandpaper. But what it does is you just have a couple of these layers and they have all these little pieces of sandpaper. It's like a mop. This is great for cleaning up live edges uh, of live edge boards, um, other, other hard to reach. So this actually has quite a few other applications, but I primarily use this with live, live edge woods. So here's a closer look at what it looks like. You just have a bunch of bits of sandpaper all put together. But if you're doing a live edge piece like a charcuterie board, this is a great option uh, really to maintain that live edge. But it's really great if you're doing like a slab. Like so here I got this really cool a figured maple slab and I wanted to preserve that uh, the edge. And so it works really well for that. On that note, real quick, there's another one I don't have. It's called the Restore. Uh, it's got a lot of different cool attachments, especially for live edge uh, where it's not as aggressive. Uh, and it really, I've seen a lot of people use that uh, with success. I just don't have that unit as well, but that's one you maybe want to look into, uh, the Restore. There's a bunch of different brands that carry it, uh, but it's also great for live edge and other sanding applications. All right, my favorite, my favorite of all of these is the ArborTech Contour Sander. So this just uh, attaches to any angle grinder, uh, any angle grinder. And what it is, is it's just a foam, not foam. Uh, it's more of a silicone rubber, uh, flexible contour. It's a contour sander. And then you just add these little two inch discs, drill a hole through it, the sandpaper. And then there's a, a little Allen key that you lock this into place. And this is so great for getting the bottoms of bowls, of dishes, of trays. But what really makes this stand out from any other, any other sanding attachment is just how it bends and gives. So as I go through and I'm trying to get the corners, I can get that corner just perfectly. Uh, and I'm not gonna have to do as much hand sanding and just kind of wedge and you know get that friction, finger burn, but uh, the ArborTech uh, Contour Sander is, is my favorite. So here's it in action. So it really does just attach to any angle grinder uh, pretty easily. Just go ahead and mount that on. Uh, to remove the sandpaper, you just use a little Allen key and there's a couple little inserts and then you can pull off the sandpaper. But here you can see that rubber, right? That kind of silicone rubber. It's really flexible. It's much better than the foam. Uh, to switch out the sandpaper for different grits or as you're working through it, you just put the, you take the pieces back off, put it back on, Allen key in, and you're set to go. This is superior 
interior for getting the edges. And so here I am uh, running the edges of this router tray uh, for an upcoming video. You can see how smooth that is. Right there at the corner, that's just really, really hard to hand sand. And so it works great for these corners. Uh, this tool is primarily used uh, with power carving. And so a lot of times you have those contours here. You can see how it's really, uh, with it up and run, you can see how it kind of just lifts up into those corners. So it's not just sanding flat, but it really contours well. So here was a, an old power carving project I did uh, where it really, it just gives pr superior results. It is a great, great tool. Another great sanding option is just using a rotary tool or a Dremel, right? And so you have these little sanding sleeves. They're a little bit narrower, but this is great uh, to save you hand sanding on specialty projects. And so for a project like this, where it's so deep, this just doesn't make sense and I'm gonna bump into it. But you know, other really intricate pieces, carved pieces, uh, where you really want that detail, a Dremel is a great option or a rotary tool. You also do have the option of, of adding in these adapters and not having, this isn't that heavy, but then having to just, all you're doing is just using this as you do some, uh, some finessing, some sanding. So rotary tools are great. This is a really cheap one, right? 20 to 30 bucks. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other versions out there, but if you're looking for a really nice specialty sander with really, really small for small sanding, this would be a great bet. Uh, a great thing not as great on a project like this uh, but on those really small projects rotary tool is a great option so here's one of the issues that can come into play uh, with these router trays right you have the different levels so you could pull this out right you can adjust the speed you have it again it's a little bit small for this type of project but you get the idea of how this can be really helpful uh, for those small pieces so not really the tool for this project but this is still a great option uh, for some woodworking projects well, there you have it. Just a couple, a couple to choose from. Uh, hopefully this gave you some ideas and this helps you really save you uh, some frustrations and time on an upcoming project. If there is a specialty tool that I don't know about, that I didn't share, please, please share in the comments down below uh, for myself and others, uh, for the woodworking community. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you found value in this, please consider subscribing to see more videos like this. Uh, like these are actually routerable. So these were all done by router. Uh, this was not done with a CNC. And so I got a whole video on how I made these as well as you can check out my router bowl video with a very similar process. But uh, there you have it, specialty sanders. We'll catch you next time.